Hey everybody, welcome to www.itvideocoach.com. Bill Grismore here, nice to have you guys aboard. In this video, we're going to take a look at Windows Server 2003 Certificate Services and how to use a web server as a demonstration point using web-based certificate authentication as a requirement to a folder on a website and then solve that authentication by using auto-enrollment to deploy a user certificate to a user to allow them to authenticate to the site. So it's web-based certificate authentication and then a demonstration of how to set up auto-enrollment in a Microsoft PKI. You can find all my videos up on YouTube under the tag Grizzamore, G-R-I-Z-Z-A-M-O-R-E. And for higher quality downloads, be sure to go to www.itvideocoach.com. Be sure to check it out. Hey everybody, welcome back to www.itvideocoach.com. Bill Grismore here, nice to have you guys back. In this video presentation, we're going to take a look at how to require uh, that a user authenticate to a Microsoft website using user-based authentication uh, with the requirement uh, through that authentication to have a user-based certificate. So let's just go ahead and dive right in and take a look. This is my website. I have a little basic website here, CoolWeb. And I'm going to my data folder, and we can see that on the data folder under directory security, that if I click edit, that I am requiring SSL 128-bit encryption. And I have issued a certificate to this website using my uh, enterprise sub-CA, and I also have a root CA at the top of my hierarchy. So I do have a complete PKI infrastructure in place and I have the website built and everything is functioning correctly for the uh, website as far as SSL is concerned. Now what I'd like to do is to take this to another level and require that whenever a user authenticates uh, to this particular folder on my website, not only is it going to be an SSL connection, which is fantastic, we love that feature, but we also want to require client certificates. Okay, If I click OK on that, and I'll just stop the site, start the site, and we'll go to the workstation, and we'll make a connection to the site. Okay, so what I want to do right now is I want to open up my web browser, and I just want to show you what my current connection looks like now that I've required a client certificate. So just go right over there to data. I'm using HTTPS, specifying the path to the folder, and you can see that the website now requires a user certificate. So if I go back and just show this one more time, we can see that we are requiring a client certificate. So when the user connects, there's no certificate on this machine, so the user cannot make a connection to the website. So if I click OK, I get an error message showing that the page requires a client certificate, as it should because the website does require it. Okay. So right now, any user that does not have a user-based certificate can't connect to that data folder. So what I'd like to do in this video presentation is show you how to deploy a user-based certificate to the user uh, and have that certificate deployed automatically. All right. So in this video presentation, we're going to look at how to use auto-enrollment to deploy a certificate to the user. This is one of the main features of Certificate Services 2003 and above. All right. So if we take a look at our CA, we can see that we have a complete list of all these templates we can issue. And one of those templates that I can issue is a user certificate. Okay, so we can create a certificate from this template, and this template is also currently allowed to be issued automatically. There's only one problem though, that this certificate is a base certificate, and I can't give the users permission for auto-enrollment on this certificate. So it's great that the certificate uh, can be issued automatically, but I can't modify it because it's not a duplicate or what we call version 2. So to set up auto-enrollment, it's really kind of a four-step process. This is step number one right here. I have to right-click on the user certificate and make it a duplicate or a version 2. So I'm just going to rename this user v2. And one of the great things about a version 2 certificate is that you can change the validity period of that certificate. I can up it to five years. I can change the length of whatever I want. Just remember, don't make the length of this certificate longer than that of the issuer. So let's make it four years. I can publish the certificate to Active Directory. I can also change my request handling. I can archive the private key if I want to, change the uh, key size. 
allow the private key to be exported. Now, one thing that is important for this particular demonstration, I don't have any kind of email set up, so my user accounts don't have an email address associated with them. So I need to remove these options for subject name, right? Because I am enrolling the subject without requiring any user input here on the request handling page. And I'm not going to change the uh, nature of the certificate. It, it can be used both for signing and encryption. So go to subject name, make sure you clear both of those checkboxes, right? And then we go ahead and click OK and we'll have a user v2 template. So that would be step number one. Okay, We have to make a duplicate and make a few minor changes there on the uh, brand new uh, template uh, that we've created. Uh, the next step, step number two, is I need to make sure the user that I want to enroll the certificate to has read, enroll, and auto enroll. So if I check out my security tab, I can see that authenticated users already have read. I can see that domain users already have enroll. All I really need to do is grab my user account and give the user auto enroll. But we'll go ahead and check all three from here just to kind of make sure that's very clear. So step number one, make a duplicate. Step number two, go to the security tab and make sure the user has read, enroll, and auto enroll. And this will allow the user to request that certificate automatically. All right. So that would be step number two. Now step number three, which I'm doing on my issuing CA, which is my enterprise sub. Right? Now keep in mind that we have a standalone root and we have an enterprise subordinate certificate authority. The automatic issuing has to be done from your enterprise CA. It's very, very important that you understand that this must be done from an enterprise CA. All this auto enrollment stuff has got to be done from an enterprise CA. Okay? So to allow the certificate to be issued automatically, I choose new certificate template to issue. And I can grab my new user v2 template and add it to the list. If this was a standard edition Microsoft server, this option to deploy this user v2 template automatically wouldn't be there. Okay, so make sure it's Microsoft Server 2003 Enterprise Edition. So we've just added this user v2 template to this list. Now, step number four, I have to create a group policy to enable auto enrollment. I'm going to switch over to my domain controller, which is DC1, and we're going to create a group policy that will enable auto-enrollment. Now this auto-enrollment policy is for my user, and that is Lulu. She lives here in LA. So we right-click on LA, go to Properties, Group Policy, and we're going to create a brand new policy called Auto-Enrollment Users. And the nice thing I like about this policy is you can use it over and over again because it's a very generic policy. We're just going to enable auto enrollment for certificates for users, which is under user configuration, window settings, security settings, public key policies. Now when I select public key policies, I can double click auto enrollment and enable it by checking these two check boxes here to renew expired certificates and update certificates that use certificate templates. And we'll click OK on that and we'll close that. And I have the policy linked at the OU where the user is. So now I can switch over to the uh, workstation and I can run my GP update and that'll refresh that policy on this machine. And then in order to get the policy to the user, I'll have to log in as the user and that will deploy the certificate out to the user. And when I log back in as the user that the policy is affecting, which is Lulu, Right there at that moment, that's going to kick off the auto enrollment and trigger the server to deploy the certificate to the user. And we can see that we're logged in as the user. Okay, now it's a little bit of a waiting game. We have to let the CA process that request. Now the way to check that is to switch back over to my CA and I can look under failed requests to see if it failed, pending requests. We'll just hit an F5 here to refresh and we'll wait for that certificate to pop in there. And we'll just hold on just for a minute and let that happen. And if we check again just one more time, we check on issued certificates. And we can see, there we go, that we have a certificate issued. And let's check the details of that certificate. And we can see that that was issued to Lulu. Okay, so the certificate has now been issued to the user. We go to the workstation. All we have to do is reconnect back out to the website. And when we go to connect to the site, 
we now have the certificate that's required you know again by the website if we go to the folder and take a look under directory security we can see that we require a client certificate and we now have automatically deployed that certificate using auto enrollment to the user we click OK and the user can connect so that's how easy it is to set up auto enrollment it's basically a four step process to get that certificate out to the user come back in my next video and be sure to check out how to revoke a certificate for a user and put it on hold and, and do some different things to actually manage these certificates once they've been issued. We'll see you in the next video.